Hermit crabs have been around for 20 million years or so, and they share a common ancestor with all. Other decopod crustaceans like lobsters, shrimp, and crabs. But while all those other critters have a hard shell covering their entire body, most hermit crabs only have shells protecting their vulnerable rear ends. And that's because over millions of years, hermit crabs have evolved to live mostly on land. Their ancestors probably looked kind of like today's coconut crabs, covered in hard armor from head to toe. But as they adapted to life on land, their shells got smaller and weaker, eventually becoming just a sort of protective tail covering. That's because their new way of life didn't require protection from frontal attacks. The biggest threat to hermit crabs as they crawl up on land is desiccation or drying out. So their shells had to evolve to accommodate this new risk. but there are eight species of tropical sea hermit crabs that have traded in growing shells for scavenging. They live in the empty shells of other mollusks, like snails and slugs, which leaves us with a very important question. If it's easier for a crab to grow its own shell than find someone else's, why don't these eight species just grow their own? Well, the first reason is related to how a hermit crab's shell grows, And that means the crab spends part of its life in a vulnerable state without any protection, while it waits for its new home to be ready. Now you might think that just growing a shell would be better than waiting around naked, but it's not that simple. You see, the process of building a shell is more complicated than just growing one. See, when a hermit crab molts, it loses its entire exoskeleton. But some animals shed their skin in thin sheets. In contrast, crabs lose their armor in a single piece called the exuvia. That exuvia is shaped to fit the crab perfectly, which makes sense because it has to wait until the next one is grown before it can move into it. But making an exuvia is harder than it looks because the crab has to split its shell along a line of weakness in order to shed it. And once it's out of its old shell, it has to hurry up and grow a new one before it dries out. If the crab can't complete this process quickly enough, it could die of dehydration or another critter could eat it before it gets its new shell on. So to speed up the process, hermit crabs rely on water to help them. When a crab is done shedding its old shell, it quickly crawls into a safe spot, usually underground, where it can stay moist while it grows. But the new shell stays soft for another three to four days. So the crab has to carry around its vulnerable new shell until it hardens. And that means for five or six days out of every two week molting period, hermit crabs are basically defenseless, which puts them at risk of being eaten by predators. And that brings us back to hermit crabs borrowing shells instead of growing their own. Snails and slugs come in a whole lot more than two sizes, which means there are plenty of shells to go around. 
and it's not like a crab can just pick up a shell and move right in. Hermit crabs have a few adaptations to make borrowing shells possible. First, their bellies are flexible so they can squeeze into a shell that's already occupied by another creature. Second, they have special limbs that they can use to scrape the snail or slug out of its shell. And third, hermit crabs have sent glands near their rear ends, which allow them to mark shells as occupied and repel other crabs, looking for new digs. And fourth, hermit crabs have taken advantage of mollusk sex differences. Male snails and slugs tend to have larger shells than females, which means there are more large shells out there than medium shells. And since hermit crabs tend to be medium-sized, that means there are more shells for them to choose from. 